In the previous videos, we have talked about cell theory and the eukaryotic cell. Today, let's talk about the brain of the cell. The nucleus is the topic of today's video. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, and let's get started. About 300 years ago, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek was sitting in the laboratory looking at the cell under the microscope when he discovered something that he described as a lumen at the center of the cell. And then we will call this the nucleus. Little did he know that hundreds of years later, students will lead a miserable life trying to study this nut called the nucleus. In my previous videos, I've talked about cell theory, the eukaryotic cell, cytosol versus cytoplasm, also versus protoplasm, nucleoplasm, whatever. So every single one of these videos is in my playlist, MCAT Biology. So you go to a playlist, select MCAT Biology and save it to your YouTube account. Nucleus comes from the Latin word, which is like kind of nucleus, I know, I don't know, kernel or seed or not. In Greek, it's called carrion. So we have the eukaryotes, they are the cells with the true U, nucleus, carrion. The nucleus is the largest organelle in animal cells. It's the control room or the brain of the cell. It contains the genetic material in the form of deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA, organized in the form of chromosomes. The genetic material or DNA is essential for replication or cell division. The nucleus is surrounded by a membrane called a um, voila, nuclear membrane. That nuclear membrane has pores. The nucleus maintains the integrity of genes. The nucleus contains a viscous liquid called the nucleoplasm, also known as karyolymph. And as I've told you in my previous video, nucleoplasm is part of the protoplasm. The protoplasm includes two things, the nucleoplasm and the cytoplasm. The nuclear membrane or the envelope is a double membrane surrounding the nucleus. I've told you before that every membrane in biology is a double membrane with an outer membrane, inner membrane and a space in between. The outer membrane is here, it contains pores. The inner membrane is here, also it has pores. And the intermediate space, also known as the perinuclear space. Here is the cytoplasm and here is the inside of the nucleus. The outer membrane of the nuclear membrane has ribosomes and is continuous with the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which also has ribosomes. The nuclear membrane maintains the internal environment in the nucleus. How? By separating the nucleus on the inside from the cytoplasm on the outside. Membrane pores or nuclear pores, they allow selective exchange between the nucleus and the cytoplasm and vice versa. It allows selective exchange of both molecules and ions. Ions by diffusion, because they are small, big molecules require carrier proteins. The outer membrane is continuous with the rough endoplasmic reticulum, that's why it's studded with ribosomes. If we unwrap and unwind the chromosome, okay, we will find all of this. So, we start with the chromosome, which is a big thing. The nucleus of the somatic cell has 46 chromosomes, 46 of these. Okay, let's unwrap it. You'll find heterochromatin, which is very condensed and inaccessible. Then you have this coil, which is called supercoil. And then you will have these balls. This ball is a histone, which is a protein. This blue thing here, like here, is a histone. And wrapping around the histone is the brown, brown part, which is the DNA double helix. This histone and the DNA helix is called euchromatin. This is open. This is not condensed. This is accessible. And here have the DNA, which is the double helix of linear DNA, which is different from prokaryotes because prokaryotes have circular DNA. 
very fun stuff. Mitochondria has its own DNA. It's circular with no histones. Also, don't forget the nucleus of somatic human body cells has 46 chromosomes. Here is an important concept called compartmentalization of the DNA. Compartmentalization, whatever. DNA transcription, which is DNA forming an mRNA, this occurs in the nucleus. This is different from DNA translation, which will occur in the cytoplasm. Different compartments. This is called compartmentalization of the DNA. So transcription in the nucleus, translation in the cytoplasm. This mRNA in the nucleus will exit the nucleus through the nuclear pores, and then it will go to the cytoplasm where translation or converting this mRNA into proteins or peptides take place. Now let's turn our attention to the nucleolus, literally a small nucleus. It's inside the nucleus, occupies around like quarter of the nucleus, appears darker under microscopy. The function of the nucleolus, assembly of ribosomes to form rRNA, which is ribosomal RNA. The nuclear matrix is a network in the nucleus that provides a structural support, also known as skeleton. It includes something called nuclear lamina, which is a type of intermediate filaments that we will discuss later. For excellent students, the vast majority of cells in your body have one nucleus. Exceptions, red blood cell in mammals have zero. I'm talking about the mature red blood cell. Osteoclast, which is a specific cell in your bone, has multiple nuclei. In white blood cell, the nucleus may be lobed or segmented. It may have two lobes called bilobed, trilobed, multilobed, whatever. Here is the neutrophil, which is a type of your white blood cell, and it has this bilobed nucleus. The main function of pores is passage of large molecules, because small, teeny tiny molecules, they don't need pores, they can just diffuse. That's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. I would like to see you on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram, and please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosa Perfectionalis. Be safe, stay happy, and study hard.